Okay, folks, welcome back to MoGraphPlus.com. In this lesson, I'm going to be covering multipass rendering using Vray for Cinema 4D, which is a very essential part of any rendering package, multipass rendering, I mean. Uh, I We do a multipass rendering with Cinema 4D all the time, and it would be essential as a Cinema 4D user that we have the same capability using Vray for Cinema 4D. Uh, fortunately, Vray for Cinema 4D has a very good uh, multipass rendering system. Uh, all of that are going to be controlled from a location from a central location uh, called multipass manager so let's go ahead and uh, see what we can do uh, just one uh, tip before actually we go to the render sometimes when you are rendering uh, using very for cinema 4d your render might look quite washed out and uh, in that case, you can go ahead and uncheck, go to your project setting by hitting Ctrl and D. And here you can uncheck the linear workflow of Cinema 4D. Uh, sometimes it's happening that unfortunately, uh, when we you uh, turn this option on, uh, it affects the V-Ray renders uh, and sometimes it doesn't. But if you happen to see your render is absolutely washed out, you can go ahead and turn off this uh, option so the render will look normal. So let's go ahead and talk about the very multipass uh, manager or multipass rendering. So the first step to actually uh, enable multipass rendering is uh, you need to go to your render setting and from the multipass you need to check the multipass here and right click on this and you need to add the post effect. So now the multipass rendering from URA can actually happen. So you need to enable multipass rendering and add right click add post effect or from here multipass add a post effect there. So this is the first thing that you need to do. Then we can go to our plugin, V-Ray Bridge, and here you have the V-Ray Multipass Manager, which is uh, here uh, you can add uh, different passes and uh, you know define them uh, wherever you want. Now, in order to add different passes, you have this menu here. You can go through. You can add all the channel, all the standard channels, all the, all the raw channels, all the special channels. I'm going to go ahead and add some channels. Uh, from here, so I'm gonna go to my standard channels. I'm gonna add the fuse definitely uh, Then I'm going to add the uh, reflections and also I'm going to add uh, refractions Let's go ahead and add uh, Shadow I don't have that much of specular in my scene, so I'm not gonna add it uh, Let's go add lighting. I'm gonna add my uh, global illumination and I don't have any caustic or subsurface scattering. The background isn't uh, there. So let's go to our, you can add this raw GI and actually see how they are. Let's go add uh, these guys and see how they actually work. So raw GI, raw light, uh, raw reflection. Let's go uh, maybe raw refraction. Let's see what we have here. Raw refraction, raw refraction, raw reflection, raw light and raw GI and maybe raw shadow there the next thing is your multi channels uh, here you can add something like object select or material select or multiple object select or multiple material select or something like extra text which is extremely important in cinema 4d we have something called object buffer as you're familiar with we can go ahead and add a cinema 4d compositing tag for example for this uh, glass we can go ahead add a compositing tag and we have this object buffer tab and we can simply go ahead and enable this object buffer tab go then go to our multipass and add uh, an object buffer here and this way this material will actually we create a mat from this material but uh, in uh, V-Ray we have something quite similar so let's go ahead and delete this Cinema 4D compositing tag I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add some compositing tag to these uh, clones and spheres that we have so I'm gonna right click on my cloner V-Ray bridge tag and V-Ray compositing tag now we haven't discussed V-Ray compositing tag yet we have uh, been using it a few times throughout this uh, training but uh, in the next lesson we actually are going to discuss the very compositing tag in qu quite in a lot of details so here in the when you add a very compositing tag to an object you can see you got this object id which is exactly as object buffer so i'm going to go and uh, say the object id for these uh, all of these spheres and clones are going to be one i'm going to go also and add a, an object buffer uh, or object mat or object id to my ground uh, so I'm going to go ahead right click very bridge very compositing tag and the material ID or the object ID sorry for these guys are going to be two okay so I can come here go to my render, render elements multi-channels I'm going to add uh, 
uh, object select and this is the first one I'm gonna it's gonna be our first object ID which is this one and also I'm going to add another uh, multi-channel let's go to our object select and this guy is gonna be so let's rename them to object select one and this is gonna be our object select two or object buffer so let's go ahead and rename it to two and also uh, now uh, also in Vira we have something uh, very cool and that is we can go ahead and actually define IDs for material so we can say for example all the objects that have for example this material here all the objects that have this material uh, I want to mat from those two so for example we can come down here you can see you have this option called material ID so I'm gonna go ahead and say for example material ID 3 for these guys and also for uh, these guys here I'm gonna go ahead and open it up these guys are gonna have the material ID 4 okay so material ID 3 and material ID 4 so I can go ahead and add those material IDs. So I'm going to go to my multi-channel. You can add multiple material selects or just one uh, material select by time. I'm going to go ahead and this time I'm going to use multiple material selects. We have two at the time. We can add as many as we want. Now the material select zero. This is going to be our material select actually three. I'm going to rename this to three two. You don't have to rename them, uh, but when we actually render and we get our uh, passes in our picture viewer it will be much more easy much more easier to actually manage so there we go and other uh, render element extra text which is very very cool we can add something like ambient occlusion very easily uh, to our uh, multipass rendering so I'm gonna go ahead and add an extra text and here I can go ahead and use uh, one of the very you can see where has some uh, of its own shader so I'm gonna go ahead and select very shader I'm going to click on the Fury shader and as you can see here you got the Vray shaders you can uh, choose what Vray shader you want here I'm going to go to the dirt which is very similar with the uh, Vray dirt that we discussed in our uh, Vray material section and here uh, I'm going to go ahead and decrease the radius our spheres are very uh, small I guess they are 10-20 uh, centimeters so I'm going to go ahead and select this radius and let's go ahead to something like maybe I'm gonna go to maybe 10 or 15 and I'm also go to my distribution and change it to one so the uh, change would be a bit more gradual so that's the extra text which is our ambient occlusion so our ambient occlusion okay and also let's go ahead and add some special channels we got some special channels like velocity uh, like normals, but in this case, uh, the Z depth is one of the most important ones. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a Z depth. Sorry, sorry, sorry. So here is the Z depth, and you got two uh, important values: depth block and depth uh, white. If I go and take a look at the camera that I have here, the depth block is the origin of the camera, is this point here, and the depth white is basically. Uh, where the focus point is okay uh, is where the not the where the focus point is where the depth map is going to be uh, completely white so if I go to my camera at the moment let's go ahead and select the camera here it is you can see the focus distance at the moment is about uh, 780 centimeter so but I want it to be a bit more so let's go ahead and I'm gonna go to maybe something like uh, 1200 okay so this is our depth map uh, here this point is about 700 and I went to about 1200 maybe here so that's where our uh, map is completely white and we can see the uh, result in a few minutes so let's uh, now that we have all of this channel let's go ahead and actually render them and see how exactly it's gonna be okay folks so the render has finished and this is the result that we are having at the moment uh, if you uh, want to see your uh, passes you can come to your layer tab and enable the single pass mode and here is the different path that <coughs> we basically have we got the GI we got the lighting we got the shadows we got the reflect refractions here we got the reflections we got the fuse we have our raw shadow and our raw refraction our raw reflection raw light we got our raw GI we have our object select one, which uh, where all the 
uh, spheres in the cloner. If you remember, you can see we have them really nicely. We have object select um, uh, two, which was the ground, as you can see. We have our material select three, all the object that have uh, that had this material, this one, this blue one, as you can see here. And we have the object select uh, four, uh, sorry, material select four, which all the objects that have this material and this is here as you can see this one this one this uh, sphere this sphere here uh, we also have our ambient occlusion and as you can see it's extremely noisy at the moment uh, but we can go ahead and increase that uh, if I come down here to my uh, multipass manager so if I go to the V-Ray multipass manager here again if I go to my ambient occlusion I can go ahead to my V-Ray Dirt and you have this uh, subdivision value down here. You can go ahead and increase this value to something like 128 and see how that's going to affect your uh, render and that's going to definitely get rid of a lot of noises. Uh, and generally speaking, if you see any noise, it's really related to your scene and your settings, your light subdivision, your DMC sampler, your image sampler settings. You go there, increase them and you are definitely going to get uh, rid of a lot of noises that we have here. But uh, here is the uh, general process for uh, rendering uh, using multi-passes and using ma passes. Uh, here you got the Z-depth that you can go ahead and stuff using the depth of field effect. You can export this Z-depth to uh, Photoshop, After Effects, New Fusion or whatever compositing package that you use. And you can simply using this uh, grayscale map uh, produce very nice uh, depth of field maps uh, inside your compositing package there. And we also, uh, if you go to our website at mographplus.com, here uh, we have a few course uh, and we uh, extensively talk about multipass rendering uh, in uh, all of the three courses, especially in this uh, our latest course uh, at one 3D Motion Graphics in Cinema 4D and Real Flow. We do a lot of multipass talking. We really uh, show you how to export those multipass and how to use those multipass uh, in your compositing package to generate some really nice renders. Uh, basically, the uh, main purpose of multipass rendering is that you have uh, absolute control in your compositing package so you can go ahead and uh, change a lot of settings uh, in your uh, render you can for example change the colors change the amount of reflection or refraction or shadows or etc and we go and talk about that especially in this course at 13 motion graphics in cinema 4d and real flow uh, so i invite you if you don't understand how to use those multipass images go here and watch this uh, uh, course here and we really uh, show you how to use those multipass to uh, generate some really nice renders and some really nice images in your compositing package so basically this is the uh, uh, process of multipass rendering and one uh, other tip that I want to give here in your multipass manager uh, you have this option called consider for anti-aliasing for your most of your uh, passes uh, it would be better if, if actually you go ahead and turn them on so I'm going to uh, turn this uh, for all of these uh, objects and all of these passes that I have so let's go ahead and enable those and also for my ambient occlusion and also I if you remember I uh, increased my uh, V-Ray uh, dirt subdivision here so we're gonna get better renders definitely uh, and also I'm gonna go ahead and change some of the settings so we maybe get rid of some of the noises that we have in our settings uh, you can see I'm gonna go ahead and increase my max subdivision uh, I'm gonna go to my DMC sampler here I'm gonna decrease this value to zero zero maybe three and uh, let's go and global subdiv multiplier to maybe two and I'm gonna add my minimum sample to be something like 12 uh, let's go ahead to our uh, indar uh, irradiance map. I'm going to go ahead to put this to something like 0, maybe to something like 70, maybe 25 here. I'm going to go to my light cache and increase this value to something like 1500. I'm going to go ahead and take a render and be back when it's finished. Okay, folks, uh, let's go ahead and see what we have here. The render is still going on and it's been about uh, 20 minutes. Uh, first of all, if you take a look at these parts, we are getting a very, very hard quality render than what we have here. As you can see, the noise are basically gone, but uh, you can see uh, the render is extremely nice. And if I go ahead to my 
uh, layers, go to my multipaths. You can see, for example, the uh, ambient occlusion uh, is much more better than what we have in this render. You can see this is what we have and this is what we have. It's really, really noiseless and it's much more better. And all the things are like that. You go, for example, if you go to your uh, shadows here, this is the shadow in this render. And if you go to uh, this render, you can see they are very extremely noisy. So by increasing the quality of your render, your multipass renderings also are going to get improved and you're going to get rid of the noises that you have in your uh, renders. So uh, really this is about multipass rendering and uh, uh, we covered a lot and it's really important to understand. You can go ahead uh, to save your multipass rendering if you wanted to. You can uh, go to your render setting and under save here you got this multipass image. Just click on save and choose where you want to save your file and when you uh, render those uh, also you can define a uh, here you can define where you want your main render to be saved uh, and here your multipass render when you define that and when you hit render uh, these multipass uh, images are going to be saved where you want them to be uh, saved so uh, see you in the next lesson